So, nymphs. The fuck even are they? That seems to be a topic which, in the grand scheme of everyone's favorite overrated mythology, gets glossed over as we're oftentimes immediately thrown into stories of Zeus packing more meat into them than the entirety of Hillshire Farms. Much to the dismay of his simpet wife. To be fair though, who isn't fucking these things? Apollo, Poseidon, fuck, even someone as faithful and cool as Hades can't seem to keep the dump dry around these things. Though to be fair, Persephone cheats on him way more often than he does her. Even with her adopted son. And her biological dad. Yeah, no, that actually happens, and another one of these goddamn things comes from that ungodly union. However, since I am nowhere near horny enough to talk about this subject on my own, I have enlisted the help of the most depraved-minded individual I could think of. God help us. Hello, tis I, the most depraved-minded individual, I guess? I'm fucking rich coming from you, though. Yeah, some of you may recognize this Lady of España from the Halloween collaboration video and literally nowhere else. But seeing as she deals in Greek mythology all the time on her channel, I thought it was only natural that I invite her on for one of my rare forays into Greece. Don't you mean foreplay? Shut the fuck up. Back to the topic at hand, it's easy to relegate the nymphs as nothing more than semi-divine nature spirits, oftentimes representing smaller, more abstract aspects of nature which don't warrant full-on personification in the way of the gods or goddesses. These nymphs are oftentimes assigned the importance to a very specific plant, body of water, or mountain, though there are a handful of exceptions which base themselves off of more abstract phenomenon such as Melise, nymph of honey, and Echo, nymph of... echoes. And drowning vain pieces of shit who are obsessed with their own self-image. Obvious social commentary and implication is obvious. Fun fact, did you know that he was also cursed to stare at himself for all eternity? So when you die and get before the Acheron, if you look off to your side, there is some random dude staring at his reflection in the water just jerking off. And this is called autosexuality and, and does in fact exist. However, rather than describing what the nymphs were during the times in which the Hellenistic Greek stories were first starting to be orated, I think it's far more fascinating to judge the nymphs based off of their implied genesis and eventual evolution. So if you haven't already noticed yet, the Greeks of Greek mythology all just so happen to be female, and just so happen to be oddly specific nature spirits, especially in contrast to the gods who are far more elemental and for the most part, male-oriented. Well, at least the assignment of important aspects of the natural world are, since the Greeks were based as hell and didn't trust women to do anything of real significance. Huh. Is that so? That's why the god of war is a dude, and the goddess of strategy is a woman. Because it is always better to charge without any plans. Well, I mean, that's how my dad conceived me. Mm-hmm. Exactly my point. I never accused the man of being smart. What we can agree on is that all the names seem to fill one or two categories of prehistoric religions. One, being Thenian fertility figures, and two, animalistic personifications of specific natural phenomena. And Messiah also wants me to say, <clears throat> resembles the Celtic pantheon in terms of how it is seemingly much more common for your average traveler in ancient Greece to have a divine encounter with one of these spirits than it is for them to fall victim to the gods, even when factoring in their voracious sexual appetites. I think it means that the nymphs fucked, but I haven't been able to fully understand it yet. Please note, this means that nymphs fuck. This leads me to believe that the nymphs are quite old. Possibly a remnant of the archaic religion of the Greek territories predating the arrival of the Aryans and their obsessions with drawing dicks in the sky. This is further reinforced by both our and our ancestors seeming lack of interest in nature spirits to compensate for more space in the spotlight for the male-dominated phallus appreciative gods who are already hogging all the blocking spaces on the metaphorical stage. Nobody appreciates a phallus more than a man, that is true. Of course, patriarchy ruins everything, we already know, Samantha, why don't you stop typing out your college thesis in my comments section and actually do something productive, like making me a sandwich. 
you can go cry more to your therapist when this is all over. Interestingly, the legend of the nymphs seems to have lived on well past the age wherein the pagan worship of polytheistic imaginary magicians was deemed acceptable by the people who believed in the totally legitimate imaginary magician, of which there was only one. So you know what that means! Cultural demonization. So the beautiful nymphs of old, whose sin against humanity was sometimes being a bit too promiscuous, evolved to become the Nereids, who were demonic entities plaguing the Greek countryside, seducing young men into totally not cash money nor JC approved fornication. Side effects may include loss of ability to speak, temporary to permanent bouts of insanity, heart attacks, strokes, and of course, AIDS. Oh no, a man was offered sex by a bunch of sexy young women and he accepted it. What a Greek tragedy, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, but can you honestly say that you wouldn't do the same? Sorry, baby. I seem for Jesus. Apparel available now. Anyway, getting back to the nymphs we all know and love, there are several different classifications for them, all far more elemental with a few exceptions like the ones we mentioned. I think what's most surprising about this species of nymphs is how all-encompassing they are in their representation of natural elements. We typically associate nymphs with the countryside or forest, though there are also nymphs of the mountains, seas, rivers, lakes, celestial bodies, and fuck, there's even a couple of nymphs floating around in the underworld acting as representatives of imaginary rivers and an imaginary land where we spend our imaginary afterlife. The following is a sporadic and nowhere near definitive classification of the various different nymphs professed throughout Greek mythology. Hot me! So when thinking of nymphs as a general concept, you probably have an image in your head of some naked ladies dancing around trees while this Satan-looking motherfucker chases them around with his cock out. Either that, or it was the video you watched just before this one where you saw the word nymph, opened a private tab, and you literally have not been able to catch your breath up to this point. You fat fuck. The former nymphs are formerly referred to as dryads. Though this isn't the most accurate word to describe them, as the Greek word dries means oak. And so they are supposed to be spirits specifically representative of the oak tree. However, like the majority of my family who doesn't realize that there is more than one type of Asian, the ancient Greeks were just like, uh, trees are brown and have leaves and shit. And so the dryads came to be representative of all species of trees with time. However, some of these nymphs take their jobs very seriously, as the hamadryads are nymphs who are literally a part of a tree which they are a representative of, meaning that if someone were to carelessly cut any part of said tree, the wood would then die and a naked woman would fall out on top of you. Which seems like a pretty sweet deal until Zeus pegs you with a lightning bolt for killing one of his favorite cock sleeves. Remember kids, Zeus is progressive and is also quite fond of wood. Other types of dryads of note are the Daphne, named for another nymph who we are going to be talking about here later as she isn't actually a woodland spirit and this entire mythology exists to make my brain sad. Basically these girls are the guardians of the laurel trees and that's all that was ever written about them. Okay, probably not worth mentioning. Just like the Epimelides, the nymphs of apple trees who are oftentimes conflated with peasant shepherds because the root word of their name, Milon, can mean both apple or sheep. And aside from that, anal retentive etymology are otherwise unremarkable as my career. Put it in my mouth. She said put it in her mouth. But you probably have heard about the Oreads, even though you might not recognize them by name. There are the mountain nymphs, and a lot of them were part of Artemis' hunting group. I don't know, because they hunted in mountains. The most famous one is probably Echo. You mean Echo? No, because there is an H after a C. English needs to fix itself. So if you're five years old and have never heard of Echo, you should not be on the side of YouTube. The creator of this channel is not approved by Susan. I'm gonna make sure that I'm promoting the people in my um, or who have that talent. So Echo was an Oread who said like beautiful shit or something, so she distracted Hera while her husband banged her sisters and cousins and aunts and grandmothers probably too. A and pets. If it moves, it gets the thundercock. Unfortunately for Zeus, Hera found out one day and instead of 
you know, asking for a divorce. She aerialed Echo Sass, making her only able to say the last thing someone else said. Oh, I get it. She retreats into the countryside because no one talked to her anyway. And on one of those days, she saw a chunky ass motherfucking man and was like, mmm, girl, yeah, I'm a slap ass. And she asked the animals of the forest to help her express her love for this guy, who was called Narcissus, by the way. And this petty ass bitch basically laughed in her face. After this, Echo went to a cave and just died of embarrassment. Been there, done that. A guy who was in love with her asked Nemesis, the goddess of vengeance, to make Narcissus suffer unrequited love, as they had to. So she made Narcissus gay for himself and he drowned looking at his reflection in the river. Well, probably more than looking, you know? But in more boring versions, he just looks until he starves or jacks off to death. The next classification of nymphs we are obligated to discuss with you, our lovely audience, are the celestial nymphs, which include those representative of the clouds, breeze, stars, and other shit you may find in the sky. The ones most worthy of talking about, for our purposes today anyway, are the Pleiades, a group of seven sisters who golden shower the peons below and tell them that it's raining, because it is. Most of these gals got fucked by either Zeus or Poseidon, with the exception of Asterope, who was a lover of Ares, and Mero, the wife of the earliest used car salesman in history. Most notable of these women is Maya, mother of Hermes. No, not the father of Hermeticism, I mean actual Hermes. N no, not Hermes in the sense that Catholics want you to believe that he's actually Odin, I mean the Greek Hermes. No, not the- you, you know what, fuck you. There are two big classifications for water nymphs, Naiads and Nereids. The first ones are the nymphs of fresh water, and the second ones, salt water. The most notable of the Naiads is Daphne, a girl who was just minding her business when fucking Eros decided that he was going to ruin her life just to prove a point to Apollo. The little chair of Quant. Who is not a cherub, but they thought that's a story for another day. He made Apollo fall in love with Daphne, and as everybody does, he stalked the shit out of her until she was like, Look, dude, I don't know how to tell you this, but time to kill myself, bye! And she asked her father, a river, to turn her into a tree. As any good father would, he gladly collaborated in his daughter's suicide, transforming her into a laurel tree. Apollo, who can't take a no, took her branches and he put them in his head, making a laurel crown, as do psycho killers with the remains of their victims. And the nymphs of laurel started being called Daphne, because they ran out of originality at that point. Yeah. Yeah, you fucking with some wet ass pussy. While you may not think that the underworld, land of the literal dead, would have a nature spirits representative of, well, you know, life, they actually have a handful of nymphs collectively known as the Lampades. The only one worth mentioning is Minthe, the nymph of the mint sprig, as she is rather infamous for being one of the few ladies to ever catch the faithful Giga Chad Hades lacking. While accounts as to how far their affair truly went are scarce, we do know that this debauchery pissed off Persephone, the lady who literally fucked her adopted son by the way, and so she had her turned into a delicious plant used to make the best flavor of ice cream ever. Fight me. In alternate accounts, Minthe gets a bit too big for her lady britches and starts bragging to Demeter that Hades prefers her pussy to Persephone's, which I guess allows Demeter to finally get over her grief and replace it all with jealousy as she literally stomps that bitch until she becomes a plant. As you do. And then, as a cherry on top, makes the mint plant barren and unable to produce via seeds. Which, fun fact, is exactly what my mother threatens to do to any prospective girlfriends of mine. Hence why I will be alone until she dies. Thank you all so very much for watching today's video, and a special thanks to Mythology in Mind for lending me her many dirty and dead mother jokes. Aww, thanks for having me. And yeah, go subscribe to my channel or something, it's not like I care. <laughs> uh, okay. Well then, additional thanks to my patrons, Nomifer, Duke of Patchington, K9 of Chaos, Kitch Fairman, Pyrotic Napalm, Penstiff, Jacob Freeland, and Mexton88. 
If any of you lovely folks at home would like to contribute to this shit show, link to my Patreon is down below. Next month we'll be delving into the Greek creation story according to the Pelasgians, so be sure to stay tuned for that. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, have a God's blessed day. Eat em up, beat em up, beat em up, beat em up I got Reese's Puffs in my bowl Now my day's on cruise control I got Reese's Puffs in my bowl And just like that I'm on a roll Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs Peanut butter chocolate flavor